Hey everybody, welcome back. I'm overdosing on petty TikToks today. By the way, I've got a little announcement in terms of my new upload schedule. Stick around until the end if you're curious. Let's get into the petty. A long time ago, I worked at Amelie's Cookies, which is a cookie shop where you make giant cookie cakes that say like happy birthday or patterns, stuff like that. This was one of my first cookie cakes. And the reason this is so bad is because <laughs> when I was hired, nobody else worked there. On my first day I arrived to just a note on the till with a sign in and some instructions on cashing up, I had to find recipe books to tell me how long to leave the cookies in. Bruh. Nobody even told me like how long to bake them for or anything let alone how many to make those like giant cookie cakes and you just saw my icing skills like i did not know what i was doing but on my first day this woman comes up and she just has an attitude she's asking for a cookie cake that says like happy birthday sarah and i'm like i don't know how to do that like i've never used these icings before it's my first day and she goes <laughs> it's your first day and you don't know how to do the job yes it's my first day and i don't know how to do the job long story short <laughs> she bullies me into taking the order so i have an order for this cookie cake i don't know how to make it i don't know how to ice it and that is what led to me crying while making this cookie. <laughs> while I was crying over this cookie, this girl from across the shopping center, because I'm in a little cookie kiosk in a shopping center, and across from me is a Thornton's, which is a chocolate shop. They do chocolate writing, and she sees what's happened, and she comes over and she's like, do you want me to ice that for you? <laughs> By this point, I've really <laughs> up like three or four cookies, so I have to make another big cookie, and then this girl from Thornton's, God bless her soul, thank you Adele, um, ices the cookie for me. <laughs> then I get a phone call from the woman who ordered the cake, and she's like, hey, can you bring it to Barclays for me? Bruh at work i can't come pick it up no i no. can't leave my job to bring this cookie to you and she, she starts threatening me again she's like you want to lose your job on your first day do you think i'm joking about ringing hr because i will lady i only have a manager the only person i've communicated <laughs> with is i assume the franchise owner via whatsapp who i've never met but again i give in to bullying because i'm afraid of people and saying no the thornton's girl is here for this she sees that conversation and she's like don't worry like I'll take it for you because she says I'm visibly upset. After this happens, I end up getting really good at this job. I made cookies of things I really liked for the displays. I love me some Nintendo. And popular uh -huh. kids ones like oh, those are good. Ginny the Pooh. Word of mouth spread and things really picked up because I was decent at the picture cookies. I just Googled a picture and copied it. I'm not Picasso, but the cake's really like 15 quid for like a personalized thing for you. So I had a good reputation in a job. Who could believe? Not my parents. After a while, <laughs> we had more staff. Things really picked up. I eventually got another job. But on my last day, that woman who bullied me on my first day came back and she came to order another birthday cake for somebody else. I was calm. I was ready. I was comfortable in my surroundings. I took the order and she actually complimented my display cookies. I told her collection time was when I was finishing my shift. And I made this the worst cookie I'd ever made. Like, I didn't tamper with the food, but like, I up the design so bad i made it wonky <laughs> i used the wrong colors i spelt the name wrong and she paid up front so when she collected at the end of my <laughs> shift i shut those shutters i let her scream at me from the other side of them i off and i never came back and i did it again <laughs> bitch <laughs> That's good. That's good. You played the long game with that one, babes. It's the you don't know how to do your job on the first day for me. People that treat people in the service industry like, you know, kids badly, honestly have never had a job. How else can you explain that it takes time to train people? I actually thought that you were gonna give this uh, this cake, the I'm bad at icing cake to her. <laughs> that would have been great. That would have also satisfied the petty craving for me. Petty never tasted so sweet. I have the story of the century, I think here. I get a phone call, it goes something like this. Hello, Kasha's Bridal. Hi, yes, I'd like to cancel my wedding dress. I'm sorry, who is this? This is Diana so-and-so. I'm sorry, Diana. Did we just talk a month ago? I, what has happened since that last conversation? It shouldn't matter what happened. I want to cancel my order. So that was my first red flag because this client did ne never, never did she speak to me the way that she was speaking to me over the phone. There's no reason for it. I didn't cause anything. She didn't cause anything. She, if she's asking a normal question, we shouldn't be talking to each other as she's talking to me. Not to mention the fact that they came all the way from Indiana to place this order on a referral from another bride that bought from us as well. And she had called to make an appointment for alterations the month prior. So I already had on, on the books for a fitting. So this call didn't make any sense. So I, nothing jives here. Nothing's making sense. And I have red flags all over the place. But then she says one more thing. She says to me, you know which dress I'm talking about. It's the ivory champagne one. Gotcha. 
gotcha because it's another red flag. I recall specifically this bride being with her entire family in the room and then they all fell in love with the ivory champagne dress and when she came to order it, she said to me, Kathy, I've always dreamt of wearing a pink dress and you have the dress that I love in pink, the Moscato color. I want to order it Moscato. No one needs to know until the wedding day when I walked down the aisle in this dress, so I want to order in pink. You remember your dream dress. You remember what color you ordered that dress in, no matter whether her. you're happy or it's sad. Not the bride. Remember. So I told this lady, I said, you know what? Let me call you back. I'm going to look up the order. Her response quickly is, oh, let me give you a number to call me on. I said, sure. I jotted it it's down. Her. And then I called the bride. Oh, yeah. No, that's somebody else. That's somebody else. I'm calling it right now. I'm calling it. That's not the bride that called. But who is it? If it's not the bride. Part three of Petty Stepsister. I guess that kind of reveals it. <laughs> So it's probably the stepsister. Okay, but we need to know the tea, okay? We need to know why this petty stepsister is calling and trying to cancel somebody else's wedding dress. To sabotage. How the French say, a sabotage. So I'm calling the bride and I'm like, please pick up, please pick up. She picks up. I said, hi, Diane. I'm, now I called her Diane for the story, by the way. Hi, Diane. I really need to talk to you about something. Did you just call me by any chance about your wedding dress? She's like, no, but you know what? Can I call you back? I'm dealing with a crazy situation with my venue right now. I'm like, you're going to want to call me back too because there's a crazy situation going on with your wedding dress. I had someone just call me trying to cancel your wedding dress. I heard her literally drop the phone. I heard myself fall to the ground, hit the ground, earthquake style. She's like, you got to be effing kidding me. I said, no. And there's a lot of red flags. And I know I just talked to you. So what's going on here? Like, who is calling in your name? She's like, Kathy, my stepsister just called and canceled my venue. And I'm having an issue with my venue. They want to charge me three times the amount for my venue because oh. she canceled it in my name. She impersonated who I was. And I want to call the oh. cops. So clearly this bride's freaking out because now she's finding out she's got no venue and someone's trying to cancel her order on her wedding dress. But she knows who it is because they got down to the bottom of it actually that day that I called her because she went ahead and started calling everyone in the family saying you won't believe what just happened my venue got canceled the venue said someone called and, and said straight up my wedding is canceled please cancel the event so they took her off the calendar in the meantime this bride the entire time thought that she had a venue for July like mid-July July 15th or 17th in Indiana in the meantime the venue told her that there's a higher price now to rebook this room three times higher than she originally booked it almost two years ago so clearly the bride's freaking out and she's like well what am i gonna do i can't afford this. so the venue said that if she can prove that she's been impersonated then they'll consider actually giving her the venue at that price the only way she can prove is to contact the police and to report her sister for what she's done her father asked her not to do that so in the meantime he's like i'm gonna sell my car and i'll just pay the difference can you believe oh, that like in oh, follow for part five excuse me absolutely not no i'm sorry but like how is it that someone can just call and cancel a wedding dress or can't like thank god you like sniffed you knew something was up thank god for you okay how is it that you can book a venue you can have a contract and there's no like verification to find out if this person is actually who they say they are when they're calling and canceling that sounds like a them problem to me that sounds like a contractual obligation to me so I'm still trying to wrap my head around everything this bride is saying. And I'm like, my gosh, why would someone want to do this to her? And I said, you know what, can we, can, maybe if I give you the telephone number that this person provided me, are you sure it's your stepsister? Because I was having a hard time believing that a family member would do something to this nature. So yeah, I went ahead and gave it to her. And sure enough, she said, that's my stepsister's telephone number. It's her cell number, actually. So I said, okay, you need proof for your venue. Let me see if we can figure this out. I'm just going to go ahead and, get, and email you. I'm going to email you exactly what happened, exactly what I just said, as if I'm talking to you. And then you just write back to me. So I'm going to create a trail, like a paper trail for you. I detailed everything that took place over this phone call, how she tried to cancel the actual bridal gown. And I we just did this for two days. And today I found out that the good news of the outcome is that she ended up getting her venue back with, because of this email. I'd still love that sister, though. Crazy. Uh, okay, so why is the stepsister, like what happened? What could possibly possess someone to sabotage a family member's wedding? Other than a, a, like a- <laughs> Some kind of crazy over here. I feel like that's like illegal. Like, I don't think you can do that. I don't think that you can do that.
I really like this creator's videos. She always has such good wedding tea. Like, love. go follow her, go follow all the creators. All the handles are always posted on the screen for this exact reason. I don't think it should be that easy to just call like a wedding venue and not have any proof of who you are and cancel the wedding. Like that is terrifying to me that there's not any like, checks in place to make sure that it's the right person. You know why there maybe is no checks in place? It's cause like who in their right mind would actually do that? Huh? This is the kind of petty that we aspire to not be, my friends. We don't love this kind of petty. Like the fact that there's no petty revenge involved in this story against that stepsister, like honestly, I need closure. I need to know that there was some sort of redemption. <laughs> I have such a crazy story to share with you guys. Before anyone calls me selfish or rude, listen to the whole thing first. So I've lived in New York City for about two years now, and sometimes I have to go back upstate two hours away to my hometown to go to doctor's appointments. So I go out to my car to do this, and there is someone double parked right next to me with their hazards on. And I'm like, you know what? I'll just wait a few minutes for them. No problem. Get in my car. Five minutes goes by. Ten minutes go by. Fifteen minutes, my patience starts to wean. So I get out of my car. I'm like, hi, is this your car? Is this your car? Do you know whose car this is? Everyone's like, no. But a couple people start trying to help me find out they start going up to other people they're like is this your car he needs to leave no answer 25 minutes later my patience is gone i get back in my car i start vigorously holding down my horn hoping someone's gonna come now the entire neighborhood is outside people are like can you stop honking i'm like no help me find whose person's car this is so i can leave so at this point about 50 people are searching for whoever's car this is nothing about 45 minutes later i genuinely have to leave i start telling people like i'm gonna be so late to my appointment they're gonna charge me a fee for not showing up they're like all right so why don't we help you back up onto the sidewalk and then you can drive out this way i'm like fine just wait one minute i get out of my car with my 16 ounce black coffee dump it through the tiny crack they left open in their window all over any of those rolling down buttons for the windows that's how petty i am i then get back in my car and as soon as i am on the sidewalk this person comes out and they're like oh i'll move it i'll move it they go to get in their car they're like what is this? And then I drive out over the sidewalk and left. So you know what? I tried to ruin my day. I tried to ruin yours. Who double parks in New York City? Like what kind of, are you, are you, are you okay? Are you all there? I'm surprised you waited as long as you did. Like I'd be calling a tow truck, stat. The coffee was a nice touch though, I'm not gonna lie, nice touch. This is exactly my level of petty, but I also hope you had enough time to get another coffee. Yes, okay, we liked the coffee, but it sucks that you had to waste it. Did it go to waste? Not entirely. No, I didn't, but the satisfaction was more than worth losing it. Okay, good, as long as that's the case, right? Get a little adrenaline boost. Who needs caffeine when you have petty adrenaline? <laughs> petty induced adrenaline. <laughs> All right, I'm gonna need some more petty. I'm gonna need the stakes to be a little higher. Come on, guys. What do we got? What do we got? What do we got? So my sister had her bachelorette trip in Folly Beach, Alabama, and only two of the bridesmaids showed. Huh? And out of those two girls, one of them was a sloppy drunk mess the whole weekend. She invited random boys back to our house. No. And just overall was not a good time. On the day we leave, we're in the car about an hour out, and she tells us that she left her laptop at the Airbnb inside the mattress. So I went what? back and forth with the Airbnb owner to try to find this girl's laptop. They kept looking under the bed, and I kept telling them, no, it's in the mattress. Why? Finally, after six hours, they found the laptop, and they said that they were going to get it shipped to us. Mind you, we gave this girl the option to turn around and she said, nope, let's just have it shipped. And I put it on my card and she said that she was going to pay me back for the yeah, shipping. Yeah, right. Yeah, right. Well, the Airbnb owner got COVID, so there was a delay in getting it shipped out. And then a massive storm happened, so there was even more of a delay. Finally, after a week and a half, I managed to get the laptop shipped to the girl after talking to a UPS woman for about two hours. And... The laptop owner, the girl, requested expedited shipping. Expedited shipping was like 80 bucks. But I said, you know what? Okay. She said she's going to pay me back, so let's do it. So the laptop was supposed to get delivered on a Friday. And the girl said, never got delivered on the Friday. Checked back in with her on Saturday, and she said, nope, never got delivered. So I checked back in with the UPS on Monday, and they said, we tried to deliver to her on both Friday and Saturday, but no one was home. So now there's just a big two-week debacle about where this laptop is. 
Finally, we get it figured out and we have it set up where she's gonna pick it up at a UPS store. So I asked the girl for the $80 because I had nothing to do with losing the laptop. I was just trying to help her get it back. And she told me there is no way in hell she's gonna pay me the $80. And I'm frustrated because I don't have that much disposable income. And all I did was try to help her get this laptop that she lost. So I reached back out to UPS and said, hey, she's not paying me the money for the shipping costs. So if you could send that back to Alabama, that would be great. Period. And they did. So good luck getting your Bye. laptop, girl. Yeah. All right. Oh, God. I'm coming to realize now that like all my friends are kind of getting married and lots of bachelorette trips planned, lots of friends that I don't know at all. <laughs> bachelorette trips are messy, messy to say the least. Like you got to make sure that the people that are on your bachelorette trip are your very, very, very good friends. Because if they aren't, there is no way in hell you are going to make it out of that bachelorette trip. Still friends. <laughs> I got one coming up soon. And like, you know me, I'm a Virgo. I'm a planner. I'm like, you know, let me just like, I'll put down the deposit here. Is everybody cool with this price? Is everybody cool with that? Everybody need this, that, blah, blah, blah. Because, you know, I want my friend to have an amazing bachelorette and nobody else is doing anything. <laughs> And we're already encountering some issues and we haven't even left yet. Oh, brother, it's gonna be, it's gonna be messy. And there's something about girls too. They just like, when it comes to like, you know, the bill coming around, it's all of a sudden everybody's, doesn't answer. Oh, you know what? We'll put it in the split wise, eventually. No! <laughs> Anyways, hopefully we'll give you an update on that. It's in a few months, so um, we'll keep you updated on this whole Bachelorette situation. But girl, the drama already! Is it me? Am I the drama? I don't think I'm the drama. Maybe I am. Back to the creator. She did something so nice for this person. And like the audacity of not at least paying you back or acknowledging that you like did all of this and like organized it for her and did everything you could to get it back to her. And she's just threw it in your face, you know? Like in that respect, I feel like you should have just given her the Airbnb owner's number and they should have just sorted it out. Because guess what? If it was her having to deal with it and her having to pay the fees, what are you gonna do? Tell UPS you're not paying that fee? No, it's cause you paid the fee for her. She doesn't have to pay you back. I would have shipped it to myself then she can have it when she gives me $80. Oh, that's an interesting take. Yes, yes. I couldn't stop thinking about the fact that someone had a bachelorette party in Alabama. <laughs> I mean, yeah, that's kind of an odd, odd place to have a bachelorette party. I don't know, maybe Alabama is lit. Maybe it's the place to be. Excuse me, why was it in the mattress? Good question. Maybe she put it in there because she was worried it was gonna get stolen. She invited random boys back to our house. No. But like, how, do, how does one, was there like a hole in the mattress? Like, how do we put it in the mattress? Why did you do that? She could have made those calls on her own. That's what I'm saying. Like, why are you putting in all this effort? You know what I mean? cuts me deep. This, this, this is, this, this hurts me. This hurts me because I can relate. <laughs> but is it petty if she deserves it? A little, but that's okay. Okay, this freaking lady cut us off in the coffee line because Absolutely apparently she not. was in a hurry, even though she had her window down and we were like, hello, it's our turn. No, she cut us off. So this man is the level of petty that I aspire to be. <laughs> and he paid for our coffee. He's like, don't pay for her coffee. He paid for our coffee. So she came to us <laughs> next and we got to order next anyways. <laughs> and then we're like, we'll pay for the people behind us, but not her. Nobody pays for her. No, thank you. And that is how it's done. The only pay for someone else change I support. <laughs> <laughs> Who cares about doing it to pay it forward and to be nice? Do it to be petty! A lady cut me off in the Starbucks drive-thru and then paid for mine. I was like, yeah, you better. Period. She should. As she should. Excuse me? There's a line here. Honestly, that's what you should do in that kind of scenario. Like, if you're gonna insist upon sneaking in line, at least have the decency to pay for the people that you cut. But then again, it depends how long the line is because you're also cutting in front of all of those other people. So you're gonna pay for everybody's coffee, you're gonna go to the back of the line. I was working for a company where you weren't allowed to date within. Me and this guy that was a manager of one of the other departments started hanging out. We weren't dating, but we did go to the movies together. 
As we're leaving, we see one of the managers from another department. We're pretty sure she saw us. A days later, I go into work and I get called in the office and they let me know that the guy I went with was fired because he was a manager and he should have known better, but they let me keep my job. Regardless of the fact that there was no hugging, kissing, holding hands, nothing. All we said was that we went to the movies. Didn't matter. She apparently had a better story. A month later, I'm working late one night and she comes strolling in with a bunch of her friends. And guess what? She's drunk. It's a little bit chilly outside this night, so she decides that she wants to buy a sweatshirt for my department. So I'm ringing her up and I tell her the total and she's like, oh, do me a favor, put in my code, I'll get a discount. Clearly she's drunk because she gave me her manager's code. So I rolled up into security the next morning and let them pull my drawer to see what code was put in and let them know what happened. Wait, I'm sorry, what? Manager's code? Her man, oh, oh, she's not the man, oh. Okay, so it wasn't her code. Oh, 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 you better, you better, excuse me. Was she so drunk that she forgot what she did to you? <laughs> then what, then what? Not only was she fired as soon as she got on her shift that night, but she had to be walked right past me. The walk with of shame. security as they escorted her out of the store. And yes, I was super petty and just gave her a nice little, hi. Okay, but like, Again, is it petty if they deserve it? That's just karma to me. Like karma to me is synonymous with petty. Unless you're being petty for no damn good reason, we don't love her. We don't love that type of petty. Not our favorite. We like to think of petty as justice served. Instant karma, if you will. Or perhaps a little less instant and a little more long awaited drawn out, moving in the shadows, karma. Manager codes were strictly used to open and pull drawers, sales corrections, and other managerial duties. She used it for herself to save money. Oh, okay, that's what happened here. I see, I see. I see nothing wrong with what you did. Like, I see nothing wrong. As well as the fact that now I had a code, I could open any register and steal money knowing it would be under her name. Oh, I, I'm sure you didn't do that, but giving someone that code is the no-no. <laughs> We're doing a little announcement on the upload schedule for now. I didn't end up getting to take very much time off these last few weeks. So we will be doing every other day in February. And guys, I gotta be honest, <laughs> it has been so nice to not have to wake up every single morning to do my back end and make my thumbnails and work been really good on my mental health. I've been able to focus on other things like my physical health and like lots of other things that I'm working on. So it's been really nice. We might keep this going forward or we might not. But I'm also very curious to know, you know, if I only did every other day or a few days a week, what days do you like having videos to watch the most? Let me know in the comments. And um, don't forget uh, that, uh, well, stay petty. And then also subscribe.